If you ever get frustrated because your prompt doesn't work the way you want, you're definitely not alone. In fact, this is something very common and it happens in every step of your prompt engineering journey, whether you just started out creating your prompt or you already have an existing one that runs for months. Hallucinations are very common and if you've never heard of it, simply imagine you give instructions to a coworker. This coworker might made a mistake, so you correct them. It's literally the same principle with prompt engineering. With prompt engineering, you define some sort of scope for your assistant, for your agentic system, and in some scenarios it makes mistakes, so you try to correct things. The difference in this case is that a prompt is a lot more precise, so you cannot just tell it what not to do or what not to do next time better, but you need to figure out what initial instructions actually cause the problem. And that's where reasoning comes in, which is what this whole video is about. I'm going to show you one of my favorite techniques that really helps me make prompts better on a long-term scale. In short, we cover a lot of more edge cases, get things done quicker, and obviously get a better outcome, which is the most important thing if it comes to prompt engineering in the first place. I'm going to show you a live example of how you can optimize a prompt, things you shouldn't do, and things you should do. And if you don't know who I am, my name is Jonas Moore, and I run my own voice AI agency since the beginning of 2024. And since then, we have helped small businesses up to Fortune 200 companies with building awesome voice AI solutions. In fact, these have become so successful that we decided to educate more people in the space since we can't handle the lead anyway, which is why we created Voice AI Bootcamp, a place for voice AI enthusiasts to meet, network, and exchange knowledge, and obviously learn together. If you're interested in that, feel free to check out the description. Everything's linked down below. And with that said, let's dive right into it. As you can see on my screen, I have a system prompt from one of our students that I just slightly altered to make sure I obviously have some fictive data rather than the actual live data. But this system prompt is basically an example that they sent to me and said, hey, look, this is what we can, this is what I have, how can I make it better? And looking over it, he had one specific case that caused an issue. So going over the system problem, let's just briefly break it down. So that can be your system problem in your case. And I, by the way, have it open inside of the OpenAI playground. So you should probably be familiar with this already. It's basically a way of testing things directly on OpenAI. And as you can see, we have the system problem. We have a persona up here. We have goals defined, the response style, and a little knowledge base that's dropped right in here. And then we have down here a couple of example interactions and a final rule. So it's a very straightforward system prompt, I'd say. And the issue that he was facing is that sometimes when he types in, I'd like to book a room, the AI actually tries to help him, even though this is not intended. So let's just look here. We can see it says, thank you for your interest in the Azure Palm Resorts. To assist you with the booking, may I please know your preferred dates, number of guests? So it asks this question, and this is something he doesn't want. And the thing is, it's not always persistent, but it's persistent enough to make trouble. So you can see now, for example, it asks even more. If I try to type it again, in some cases it works that it doesn't ask, but you can see it's pretty straightforward. You can pretty pretty much tell that it's literally doing it most of the time. So because of that, he was not really happy because he didn't know how to solve it. And the thing that he tried to do, and which you most likely have experienced as well at some point in your journey, is that you try to fix the prompt by appending extra instructions. This is the worst thing you can do because it will really overbloat your prompt. And yes, it does work for the first and for the maybe second and third issue that you're trying to solve. You're increasing the amount of errors you're going to face overall, which is really, really bad. So do not do any kind of instructions where you just try to use negative prompting. So do not do this, do not do that and just drop them randomly within the prompt. This is the worst you can do. I'm gonna show you how that works otherwise. But what I mean by this, and I just wanna make clear, clear that we are at the same page. If I would go, for example, at the end of the prompt and I can see it basically asks now these kind of things, I would say something like, do not help with booking related things. You cannot book anything. So this would be a very basic fix that you just literally drop at the end of the, the chat. And the thing is, it would work. So it would tell you now why it can handle bookings, but the issue is, let's for example say you adjust your system prompt and you add in some more features into it at some later stage. This is actually causing trouble because then it gets confused because at the end you have an instruction to not do it, but then you want to do it somewhere else in the prompt. And this is just really, really bad. So this is a method I would not recommend you to do. The way I'd like you to see this whole thing instead is trying to understand that something in the system prompt is causing the AI to think that it can actually do that, even though you might not have defined it. So if I just remove that part and I try to drop it in, you can now see again, it basically tries to help, right? It tries to help and ask for the number of guests, which we don't want. The main thing we want is that we basically just refer them either to the website or whatever is defined in the knowledge base. And the way we figure that out is by using reasoning. And this is a very straightforward method that is super, super easy to implement. And there are a couple of methods that I'm gonna show you today. So reasoning basically means that we try to get additional information out of the response that makes the AI reason why it has done a certain thing. And this can be done in obviously two positions. A, it can be done inside of the user message or it can be done inside of the system prompt. So instead of just getting the actual answer, we also want to have a sentence or something like that that tells us why the AI has done something the way it did. 
And there are two ways. The easy way for you, if you want to test it, you can obviously just drop your stuff into the OpenAI playground, like right here. Or if you've seen my other video of Langfuse, Langfuse also has a predefined playground that you can use for that. It's really, really great. It works in all of the cases because it just uses the system from features. So let's, for example, say we want to use it in the user message. What I usually like to do is I just have the normal message and then I basically just create a new line at the end and I'll just add something like, like this. Also add a reason about why you have chosen the answer. So I'll just add this as well in, in brackets. And now if I send that, you will see that the AI answers usually with a normal message and it also answers with the reason why it does it. And now looking over it, we can see, as the digital concierge, I share accurate information, assist you with your booking journey, but I do not pro process reservation myself. So it says it here, but it tries to still collect the information. So you can see that it still tries to do that, which means there's most likely something in the scope that's not defined, that doesn't limit it enough for the AI to still consider handling these things. Right, this is number number one, that, that's the way number one that you can try. But let's for example say we just wanna do it with a normal user message. And this is by the way now my preferred way. You can also use a response format inside of the system prompt when you use playgrounds. And the way this works is by you adding an actual response format section with markdown it at the end of the prompt. And this works like this. I already have copied one here that you can see now. It basically says response format, we just define it in markdown code. And we have a JSON with two keys one for the user message and one for the actual reasoning. If you don't know about JSON, I highly recommend you check it out because it's something you will encounter mostly anywhere in your automation journey. And the way this works is that now the AI is basically instructed to return a JSON. In our case, we don't really care if it's 100% accurate. We just care that it returns a JSON that looks like a JSON because we just wanna see what actually comes out of it. And that said, you can see now I have the message I'd like to book a room. If I send this now, you'll see that it answers in JSON and you can see what's the user message and as well the reasoning. And now again, we can see the same thing. Thank you for choosing the result. May I have you prefer check-in date? And then the reason for that is the knowledge base does not indicate direct room booking capability. Asking for key booking details allows me to assist further with direct guest blah, blah, blah. So it thinks because the capability isn't set in the knowledge base that it tries to determine that by just getting more details pretty much, right? And this is what I understand. Now, I would probably just regenerate this a couple of more times to really get a feeling of where the pattern appears for me being able to, un to understand what of the prompt is the actual issue. And what I'm gonna show you here is actually a fix that I spent quite a lot of time, long time to figure out, but it is something that you should add to mostly all of your prompts because it's really, really powerful. And the solution for this is actually pretty straightforward, but if you wanna learn it, I'd highly recommend you pause the video now, try to read over this message and try to understand what of this system prompt could have caused it. The system prompt and everything else is by the way linked in the PDF below under the video description, so you can check it out and simply follow along and basically take this as a reference for learning. I'm keen to see what you came up with with your solution, so feel free to drop it in the comments below. I'm very happy reading through that. Now, to give you the actual answer on how I solve this problem or what this problem is in this case is that there is something that is just vaguely defined that makes the AI obviously think that it can't do certain things because they are not defined. And because we say we don't have any specific booking capabilities, which is true, we re don't really have them defined in the system prompt, it expects it to just collect more details and try to handle things from a different way. However, this is literally just a normal prompt. There is no tools or anything attached to it, so it should not even have this possibility. And the way I limit that is by literally just stupid, stupidifying, I'm not even sure if that's the right word, but just making the system prompt stupid and just enriching it with the information that we provide. And this can be done with a very simple sentence in this case. Because up here, for example, I have already a section that says stay within scope, right? So that's what we have in the system prompt. And you can see it says only provide information that is known to be accurate. And we also have do not invent prices. Great. These are also things that usually happen, but there's one more that we can add that really makes this thing a lot better. And that is a sentence like this. You don't know and can't help with anything except of what it is defined via this prompt or in the tool course. So this message alone probably now makes a lot of sense, right? We basically tell it, it has no idea about anything except of anything we have defined inside of the system prompt. This is a really great way of removing a lot of hallucinations, not just for that specific example, but also for other examples where it might have more specific cases. Let's for example, say a restaurant reservation or a spa booking or things that you haven't covered. They would otherwise also still cause the same kind of problem. And this way you basically limit it to literally only what's available in your system prompt. So this would be a way on how I would fix something by understanding how reasoning works, trying to determine where the issue comes from, and then adjusting it properly inside of the prompt. And with this, I do not have any negative promptings at the end of the prompt. It makes things clear. And now if I run, for example, the question again, I'd like to book a room, you'll see now that it answers different. I'm unable to assist direct, 
with direct bookings, but I'd be happy to provide details about room, amenities, blah, blah, blah. So now it answers properly. Now it answers, it doesn't try to est estimate something or think about using something from the knowledge base just because it doesn't have access to it. And this is also a lot more consistent. It might still do it, obviously, because that is just the nature of prompting. There you need to play around with temperature, make sure things work out, maybe just rephrase them, use different words, maybe like make it even more concise, because sometimes that really helps as well. But you can see that it does have an impact. So the more often I type it here, you will see that it's basically not able to assist with bookings itself. And you can also see now that in the reasoning, it says that it really can't make bookings. So now it has this understanding of that it can literally just do what's defined in the system prompt and handle whatever you give it access to. So this is a massive game changer. This improves your prompts probably already a lot. And this is a learning that I had over a long period of time. We refined this process, obviously. So the one I showed you now is just a small key example because this one ties in a lot better if you have really, really well structured prompts with things like guidelines, instructions, not tonalities, persona, etc. But this will definitely work. Nevertheless, the prompt you use, if you add something like that and you basically limit the scope to anything that's available in the system prompt and the tools, you will have a better outcome already right out of the box. But that's a learning I'd like you to give you along because I really want you to make good prompts that actually work and bring some value to a business, whether that's yours or that's for the businesses you built these agents for. Now, I know this is a very basic concept, but it can get really complex and you will probably understand that when you actually try it. But simply imagine that reasoning, adding reasoning to it is really, really good because it gets you more insights into what's actually happening in the prompt. However, there's one last point that I'd like to give you along because if you add reasoning to it, you also invoke something like a chain of thought, which basically means that the AI already tries to determine certain things out of the prompt to increase the quality by literally just you trying to add reasoning to it. Because the tokens that are being generated have an impact obviously on the other tokens that are being generated after that. That is something really important to keep in mind. So by literally just adding reasoning to it, you might already increase the quality, which also alters the reply that you would usually get instead of using the AI without any reasoning. So that is an extra you need to keep in mind. So definitely make sure that when you test it, you don't just rely on the response that it gives when you make reasoning. Also make sure to then take the adjustment and remove, for example, the response format from the prompt and try it again and see if the issue still persists. Because this can be good and bad at the same time. Because chain of thought is great because it helps the AI to understand more things. It generates more tokens, but it also gives you often a better output. However, if you test things in a way like this, it might also alter the way it responds. And that's something you want to avoid on long term too. Now, with that said, I really hope you have some stuff to process. Definitely check out the PDF you find below and definitely check out our community. This is stuff we teach there literally on a daily basis. Right now, we're over 5,000 people already working on voice AI and it's just growing. The demand is growing because there's so much there out there, which is one of the reasons we started this whole thing in the first place. So if you can motivate you to start your own business or leverage voice AI for yourself, we'd be more than happy to do so. That's all I have to say for now. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one.